My name is Dad. This is my wife, Beth. Beth. Hi. And uh, she was my caretaker. What a beautiful woman. Um, it all started out. I was a rough carpenter. I, uh, you know, I was a man. Never thought of things that would happen to me, like, you know, cancer or anything. Um, I'd be coming home and I'd walk in the front door and I'd have a seizure. And Beth would go, well, what's wrong? I couldn't answer her. I couldn't do nothing. I'd be sitting there shaking. She'd help me to a chair. This would happen about seven or eight times, you know? So I went back to work, kept on going. And uh, this was during the winter. And um, one time we, we went out and I come home and I couldn't hardly breathe. And I thought, man, I'm having a heart attack. Beth says, we should take you to the hospital. Went to the hospital. And when I went there, they, you know, put me on x-ray and whatever, you know. And the nurse comes out and she says, well, I got good news and bad news for you. Well, what's the good news? The good news, you have double pneumonia. Oh, wow. The bad news is you have cancer and uh, we don't know what it is. By that time, they put me in, into the hospital. So I was there with no accomplishment of knowing what I had. My family doctor came in. He says, Ed, he says, this is way beyond. It was way beyond that doctor's. He never saw anything like it. He didn't know what he had. And, and he was never sick. He was never sick. He In worked my life. a worked work. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so I laid there in about a week. And uh, every day, every day I thought, man, I'm, I'm just, you know, wasting away, you know? Every day they told him it was somewhere else. And it was, it was, my doctor explained, you know, my family doctor explained, he says, I've never seen something like this. It was like cellophane bubbles all through your body. And I said, okay. So by that time, it was in one week. And then, you know, they gave me a, they gave me a, I asked them, how long do I have to live? We don't know. I says, I'm not going to die in a hospital. I want to go home. My wife, she turned on the TV. Writing is Harley Davidson. And I looked at it and his name was on the bottom in the corner. And I read the name and I said, I, I know him. I know that man. And so I called some friends that are closer to him. And they said, yes, he has cancer. He went to the cancer treatment center and he's doing great. So of course the ad was for the cancer treatment center. And I, I had never really heard of them. And I said, you know, we're, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna call them. So I called them and in, in our local hospitals, the arrogance and the just just the really bad way they treated you. The phone call to cancer treatment centers was like, I, I mean, I, I call it a fairy tale because they were so nice and so helpful and just 
understanding understanding and they were just like well we're gonna we're gonna get you here and when they said you know they're gonna fly us out and handle everything i'm thinking right that doesn't really happen but they did and everybody was just so unbelievably bubbly and friendly so i'm like okay this place i felt so much peace and he was so scared. We were stressed. I was and, uh, stressed. He was stressed. And I said, we're not giving up. So, you know, then they put us in a hotel. And uh, they said, you know, I couldn't believe. I said, I'm thinking, how are we going to afford this? And they said, no, there's no, there's no charge for this. You could decide to stay or you could decide to go back home. So we let them run it through tests and stuff. And their prognosis was they didn't know what it was. It was rare. They had a team waiting for me. Yeah, the team of doctors was was just, just especially awesome. for me. Yeah, just for him. And uh, mm -hmm. it's okay. And then uh, it's okay. By the time I got there, I, I was dragging my feet when I got off the plane. And by the time I got there, I was wheelchair bound. It, it was uh, a day, a day. A day's worth. And I could not tie my shoes. I could not hold a fork. I slurred my words. Um, it was just horrible. And I said, well, this is it. They hurried and made a mask for me for radiation. They said I had a big tumor on my brain. So I had a great team with the radiation. The, and the radiologist. He was just fantastic. Was the only person that had ever seen this cancer. He said yes. it was rare germ cell cancer and it was in the testicular region. And he'd seen it one time earlier in his career. And the tumor was pressing so hard on my skull. That's what caused me to lose all, lose all my motions. So by the time I got down there, it, they put me on the table. They went ahead, uh, gave me the first treatment of radi radiation. I says, wow, you know, this is something else. So relaxing in the room, just looking at the sky. As I came back, they put another treatment. I had 16 treatments of radiation. But by the third by, by the third by treatment, the third treatment, I was starting to have mobility in my arms, my hands, starting to grab a, you know, utensils to eat, um, tying shoes by myself, getting dressed by myself. And I go, wow, this is amazing. So then after that, you know, out there, all the radiation, we came home. Um, they gave us a weekend off. Weekend off. And we came home to get our car. We came home to get the car and come back. So. Um, and then it came the chemotherapy. The chemo people were so very, so very nice. Um, I couldn't believe that six weeks went that fast. I didn't remember a blur after, you know, when I, I came in. We would go out and, you know, go to visit the Jelly Belly factory or something like that. And, and it was a good little trip, you know. I've, I've, I, when I'd come back, I had have, you know, just, you know, a little seizure or so, but it took time, I imagine, to um, get back on my feet fully. 
But then again, I'll tell you what, that was, they cured it. And when I went back for my first checkup, the doctor said my cancer was up to 300,000. It was so bad. It was all the way through. The markers. The markers. The cancer markers. And when I was done and came back to my second one, I was zero. And when I came back to my third one, I was negative three. They had never saw numbers do that. And uh, it's okay. During the process with the, the team of doctors and stuff. They, they were, were all just, so knowledgeable. They were so nice. No, and, no arrogance. I they, just want to express how they, they removed all my worries because I'm thinking of the paperwork, the insurances, the financial, all those things behind mm -hmm. the scenes you have to take care of. They helped me through all of that. They had all the facilities that you could possibly need, a computer room upstairs on another floor. I could go up there and do the social security, just all these little things that were so stressful for me. They, they eliminated all that. They helped you through all of it. We kept things fun. Uh -huh. You know, his ability to get around was just, it was amazing how fast those three radiation treatments eliminated that uh, tumor, you know, shrunk it down to where it wasn't pressing on his nerve or whatever, you know, spine or, but um, just the whole process was just amazing. It was amazing. And it, it was, it was just so unbelievable how wonderful they made you feel. Yes. I just, I thought, oh, what a blessing this place is. I mean, they really do treat you like their mom. Yeah. I mean, when I saw that, everything I read, and even the struggles as the caregiver, the cancer spiders, they had books. And I thought, I read the books and it helped me get through because, you know. It was nice to relate with other people. Uh-huh. It was And talk to them about their cancer too. Yeah. It was like therapy for me. Yeah. You know, and it made me realize how lucky I am. It was, yeah. you know, I could have been gone in a couple days. Right. On my way down. Yeah, they told you just. And, you know, I just love life now. I do. We just try to enjoy life every day yeah. and be thankful. And we're so thankful for the cancer treatment centers. So thankful.